Happy Saturday, everybody. This is Laura with Jot and Tittle Typewriters. I've got a 1960s Electra 120 for you. We have repainted this in something sunrise. I don't remember. Matte sunrise or something like that. Gorgeous coral color. Gorgeous. This actually, FYI, the very first painted typewriter we sold was this color and it was uh, a Smith Krona DeVille. And I'll be honest, I really like the DeVilles. We have not found one since then. So I would love to find me um, a DeVille. So that was two and a half years ago. Can you believe it? We have done almost 800 typewriters in two and a half years. Wow. Okay, let's take a look at this one. The Electra 120 is one of my favorites. Just a solid machine, really good. And this one's really pretty. Okay, let's start back here. Here's your paper holder, which I like. I don't like the sound of the paper hitting the table when you're typing. It's kind of like, uh, you know, nails on the chalkboard. Uh, I don't know why, it's just kind of, it's a weird sound. It makes this pop sound when it hits the table. Okay, margins, I digress. Right, left margins. To move the carriage, your levers are right here. Just pull, it doesn't matter either side, pull it forward. The carriage will move only as far as you have the margins set. Um, also, this is a 12 inch carriage, which means it's perfect for um, if you wanna do landscape or if you have odd sized paper. So I always recommend for crafters because it's just really good to have a typewriter on hand because you never know when you wanna do something crafty and have like typewriter print off to the side or something. But I always recommend a 12 inch carriage for crafters just because you guys are so creative. You never know when you're gonna find this massive paper and maybe you wanna type something around the edges and this is gonna accommodate the larger paper. Okay, and yes, you can use cardstock on typewriters. All right, um, where were we? Moving the carriage. Oh, car uh, paper release. So if your paper gets crooked, you just pull that forward and you can um, straighten it out. This is your line selector. So when you hit your return handle, it's gonna advance one, two, or three lines. I'm gonna keep the carriage over to the left because I want to open up the top and I don't want this handle to scrape the top. So this is very important. Always remember to move your carriage to the left before opening the top. And you just pull that forward. Inside, we left the original metal spools inside for you. Yay! That's awesome, which means we wound extra ribbon. So this is like getting an extra spool of ribbon. We've already put it on this spool because the um, the regular universal uh, spools that we use that we we buy in bulk and we put them in our new in our typewriters uh, they have a little bit of ribbon on them but when we hand roll them um, you know we go all out we like fill that baby you know okay <sighs> I digress again one of those days okay so this has come out of its guide wire you always want to make sure and that is very easy to happen when shipping. So before you type, open up, make sure the ribbon's in there properly. It's still in the guide wires. Use, I have a photo of this area, up close photo. Use it to reference to make sure it's loaded properly. Or if you have one like this and you wanna know how to thread it, you literally just drop the spools in there, thread it here, here, here. And when you get to the end of the ribbon spool, you're gonna have to manually reverse the direction right here. So that's how you reverse it, back and forth. When you get to the end of the spool, it's not the end of the ink, reverse that direction, and you can reverse it many times before you need to change it, because there's a lot of ink on that ribbon. Okay, color selector, it's on black, there's red, tab, set, clear. This is an electric typewriter with a manual return. And it also has regular space, half, and power space. Let's go ahead and turn it on. And let's do a typing demo. Here's your on switch. I'm gonna flip it up. I like to give it about 10 seconds for that motor and everything to kick in. And let's go ahead and load some paper. 
Okay, let's do our typing demo. I had to stop the video and we're just coming back and we're gonna do the typing demo. And so you just put your paper right here, turn the handle, and you can see it's crooked. So this lever right here comes forward that releases the tension on the paper, adjust it, re-engage, and voila. And now I'm gonna check my margins. They look pretty, pretty good. And let's do some typing. We'll turn it on. So this is a 1960s Smith Corona um, Electra 120. And I don't remember if I said before, here's your tab set clear. Um, so let's go ahead, I wanna tab over. And tabs, most people don't use them. They're just really for creating columns or indenting paragraphs, which nobody does anymore. But. So like I don't even, I don't even use my tabs. Let's see, but they're there if you want to use it. Whoops. Um, let's try that again. Oh, by the way, when you make a mistake, what do you do? You backspace, but backspace doesn't erase and you just type over and keep going or you can act or you can X through it or do a dash through it. And by the way, speaking of, on a electric typewriters, there's uh, three keys that have an auto repeat and that's gonna be your dash, your period, and your X. And you just hold them down and they'll auto repeat, okay? And so that's just kind of a fun feature to have if you wanna create, um, you know, a division or typewriter art or mistakes. Um, you wanna, you just totally butcher a word, just X through that whole thing and type, just keep going. And uh, that's just part of typewriting. Okay. This feels really nice. Okay, let's try the red. Okay, so there's the bell, um, but I'm gonna keep going. And so when you hear the bell, you should hit the return handle, but I'll keep going. Okay, so now it's gonna stop on you. And this MR, margin release, releases that. So you can finish that word and then hit the return handle. This is going to be great for kids. And um, if you're on a budget and you need something that's going to do a lot of work, this will be okay for it. Um, this didn't have the same, I'm all about the feel. So it's very, sometimes it's very abstract, the uh, recommendations I give you. So this one, I would recommend for casual writing and for kids, beginners or budget. It probably can handle larger writing projects, but as I was typing, it just didn't have that confident feel that I like when I'm, uh, or it didn't have that groove feeling that I like when I'm working on a really long project. So that's not to say it wouldn't be fine. This is strictly a personal opinion. Um, so um, in my personal opinion, based on how it feels, is this is probably better for casual and occasional writing. But there's nothing wrong with it. It's just a gut feeling, you know? Um, I like to connect with my typewriter on longer writing projects. And um, so again, nothing wrong with it. It would probably stand up just fine to longer writing projects. But I'm just saying, you might want something better if you really get to do a lot of writing. Um, I might try something different. So for kids, 
uh, college students, um, you just want something to do an occasional letter, this is going to be fantastic, not to mention it's gorgeous. So again, there's nothing wrong with it, um, just personality-wise, that, that's my take on it. So you take it with a grain of salt, all right? Thanks so much for watching. Please visit the website links below and give us a thumbs up and you all have a blessed day.